Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how to use time acceleration in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, usually I would be like, oh, you shouldn't use time acceleration. I mean, we've got these long flights, you should be flying them. But you know, for some folks, you don't have forever, or you just want to use time acceleration as a way that you can make your practice a little bit simpler. So we're going to take a look at that now. Let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, uh, we want to set up the buttons for time acceleration. So what I like to do is tap the escape key. I'm going to go down to control options. I'm going to go over to my little fancy stick here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, search by input real quickly. And if I go ahead and uh, ooh, if I go ahead and press this button real quickly, you'll see this thing that says sim rate. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a general search here and make sure that this is set to all. Type in rate, or you can type in sim if you prefer. And what that will do is that will go ahead and search for that particular item. In this case, there are three different pieces. You have the sim rate, which allows you to change it with your plus and minus keys. You have the increase sim rate button, and you have the decrease sim rate button. You can see that I actually bound it right onto my primary joystick here because I want to do an instrument approach. It's much, much simpler to zip through the instrument approach, line myself up, and then return time to normal. One thing you're going to notice is there is no listing here for what the current sim rate is. So after you've gone ahead and bound these controls, like you can see that I've done here, there's an extra little thing that I recommend that people do. So I'm actually going to go ahead and press OK here. We're going to go back, go back, and that's find an airplane that's got a clock on it. So now what I like to do is I like to be able to identify what sim rate I currently am. So what I will usually do on a flight when I'm going to be using it is I go ahead and set up my elapsed time button. I'll go ahead and drop the control, and you'll start seeing this thing count up in seconds. Now, if you have a regular clock or something like that, uh, that works really, really well. It doesn't really make a big difference as long as you know what time it is. Because if we have a little second hand, we can identify how fast time is progressing. Now, there are other ways to do this, too. I've actually seen that there are little bindings and things like that you can actually attach and have a display, and there's even a little plug-in you can get for it. But like I said, I like to use it just the way that we have it now. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I've got my little flight here. It's all planned out. Right? We're going down to Groton. And uh, we're just going to demonstrate how you can kind of use it when you're in the flight, as well as some of the practice. I'm sorry, we're going down to a Republic. So I'm actually going to do a direct. And I'm going to, whoa. <laughs> well, that's not very good. Come on, man. Use the one that works in the real world. It works much, much better. I'm going to go down to my activate button here. Again, this is just sort of a shortcut here, so I don't have to go through the process of uh, taking that stupid little left turn, and then taking the right turn, and then taking the left turn. And we can just kind of go ahead and get going. So one thing I recommend uh, whenever you're working with um, the different options as far as time acceleration goes is I recommend people not use time acceleration during things like takeoff and taxi. Uh, one of the mistakes I've always seen, and I've done it probably a million times myself, is I try to use time acceleration to rip down a taxiway just to panic at the last second and try to find out exactly what we need to do and then find out that I've gone off the runway or have to pause or something like that. If you're really in that much of a hurry on the ground, uh, I recommend usually using slew instead. So we're going to go ahead and get this airplane up. Uh, this is uh, going to be a VX takeoff. So I'm going to get to 63 knots, which is uh, sitting right there. VX, for those of you who remember, is going to be your best angle of climb. It's just a nice little safety feature to keep us from smack into the ground there. All right, so I'm going to bring up that notch of flaps. We're going to accelerate up to our VY, which is about 75 in this version of the 172. And I'm going to go ahead and take myself a nice gentle left turn here. Again, uh, remember, you're going pretty slow. When you turn, your load factor will increase, which uh, increases the probability of a stall. But you folks uh, know that already. It's just kind of a fun thing to think about. Nice little area here. Uh, absolutely lovely little clouds. Uh, nice trees. Of course, at this time of year, there wouldn't be a single leaf on any of those trees. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, fire up the time acceleration option. Now, some people say, well, if you're going to do time acceleration, there's no point in using autopilot. You're probably saying, no, if I'm going to use time acceleration, I obviously want to use autopilot. Now, here's the problem. And we'll go ahead and show you in just a moment. Because like I said, I just want to get myself somewhat on course here before I get carried away. I'm swinging to the right a little bit. I'm swinging to the left a little bit. And that looks pretty good right there. I'm going to go ahead and trim this airplane off. Uh, generally, like I said, make sure you get the plane as stable as possible before you start pushing those buttons. Otherwise, you're going to find everything is accelerated, including your own control inputs, as we'll demonstrate in a moment here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here, go ahead and select an altitude. We're going to go up to a three grand. That sounds pretty good to me. Autopilot, we're going to go ahead and press the navigation hold. We'll make sure we're in GPS mode, which we are. And I'll go ahead and increase my vertical speed. We'll do uh, 500 feet per minute. Okay, so now we're good to go. Well, we're going to be on course in just a minute. The aircraft is going to start turning. So now we're going to experiment with our time acceleration. So the first time you press the time acceleration button, I'll press it once, you'll notice everything speeds up a little bit. You are now at 2x. So right now you can see um, for every one second that passes, two seconds in game or passes, everything seems to be running pretty stably. The aircraft is continuing to climb nice and smoothly. You can see everything's working fine. My vertical speed is good. My controls are good. Everything's fine. It's getting bounced around just a tiny bit. So I'm going to go ahead and press the time acceleration key a second time. So this is going to put you at 4x. So even though this says that I'm doing 110 here, the reality is I'm doing 440 knots, which is pretty quick. 
Now, one thing you'll notice about time acceleration, and this surprises people, is your fuel consumption matches the current time acceleration. What that means is if I'm burning normally five gallons per hour, I'm now burning 20 gallons per hour because I'm at 4x. Keep in mind, you're also moving four times faster, but it's one of those things that people realize, oh, I still need to be able to carry enough fuel in order to be able to safely do my journey here. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the button one more time. Now, this is gonna be one heck of a jump. If you take a look down here, you can watch my time blasting by. Now, this is the third time I've increased our time acceleration here. And this is usually where I tell people to stop. Uh, some people like to sit there going, oh, I want to crank this sucker up to uh, some ridiculous value. Uh, well, you can, but uh, you're going to start having some problems. And I'm actually going to demonstrate those problems for you so you can see what it looks like. So I'm on my third click here. Uh, this is our, um, as you can see, we're making pretty good time. Go ahead and click it one more time. And you can see uh, now my frame rate is starting to take a tank. And uh, depending how strong your computer is, I have a very strong computer, this could get bad. And the problem is, as your frame rate drops, your automatic pilot is going to lose its ability to safely go ahead and control your place in the air. Uh, when this occurs, of course, uh, you're going to get what they call oscillation, where if this was supposed to be my normal flight route, you, your aircraft would start doing this very, 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 very violently. The higher you go, the worse the oscillations of it. You know, watch this. You cannot accelerate past this point as long as you are inside of that mode. Now, because we're flying a Cessna 172 here, and we're flying at low altitudes, I'm not getting the oscillation issues that you typically uh, be seeing of, with a larger aircraft. But you notice how it's starting to kind of do one of these a little bit, trying to lock onto the path. If there's any form of weather, that effect gets multiplied. Next thing you know, the aircraft will be pitched at the ground and you could be missing a wing because it suddenly brang, 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 it loses frames. It will literally drop flight information. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, slow us back down. How do I know how much I need to slow down? Well, let's come back here. Slow myself down once, slow myself down twice, slow myself down three times, slow myself four times. Eight, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do you see the advantage of the clock? Because we have the clock, we can see exactly what normalcy is. Now, the interesting thing is you can actually slow it down to half. Watch this. <laughs> so now I'm moving half of my speed, which is wonderful if you're trying to do a really, really pinpoint landing or something along those lines. Now, let's say you run into an issue that you're flying an airliner that becomes oscillating like crazy. Trust me, it'll go like this. You'll know exactly what it looks like when it happens. Wow, I feel like I'm moving so slow now. If that happens, the safest thing to do is to shut off autopilot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and disengage autopilot real quickly here. And we'll go ahead and kick the, uh, so the uh, power up all the way to where we had. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ha, <laughs> 32X. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I shouldn't be humming um, uh, licensed music. So I hope you're appreciating our little slideshow here. You cannot accelerate time this aggressively using um, the automatic pilot. If you attempt to do that, uh, nothing will happen. But notice by the most gentle commands and controls on my hand here, I am able to fly this uh, ridiculously dangerous slideshow almost directly to my target. One, two, three, four, five. We're still too accelerated. Four. Bam. Ta-da! And notice we've actually overshot the runway that we're supposed to be landing on. So you can accelerate time that aggressively, but just keep in mind you have to hand fly the airplane. The automatic pilot simply will not work. Now, keep in mind, every little moment you make, movement rather, is going to be massively multiplied when you're moving at speeds like that. So if you go whoop, like this, oh my gosh, you will be in the ground with your expensive airliner faster than you can snap your fingers. It's also worth noting that some airliners, especially payware variety, will not support speeds like that. Uh, the reason they're not going to support speeds like that is because they have really, really complicated avionics that do all sorts of magic kind of uh, behind the scenes. And if you start messing with things like that, uh, all that magic behind the scenes starts to break down and suddenly you find yourself in a position where it gets messed up. Another thing worth mentioning too is you want to be very, very mindful of any sort of graphic settings or like that. If your computer can render frames quicker, you'll be able to take advantage of higher and higher time accelerations with less weirdness. Uh, you know, if you're in a situation where you really, really start cranking on it and your graphics are set all the way down, you'll have no issue cranking around the world. Also note, of course, since uh, Microsoft does go ahead and grab graphics and things off the internet, if you're in a situation where the um, connection is not good, you're going to find that it gets tremendously, tremendously choppy. It makes it very, very, very difficult to safely operate on whatever aircraft you are with time acceleration. But that being said, I love it. Now, there's one last point I want to make. Uh, this is kind of an important point, one of the reasons why I'm taking my time to uh, put this thing on the ground. And that's the fact that when you are time accelerating, you don't get free hours in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, what do I mean by that? 
what I mean by it is it means all those lovely logbook hours that you love to accumulate and uh, join the 100 hours club and the 1000 hours club will be not modified by the time acceleration. If your flight took 20 minutes in real time, you only get 20 minutes added to your logbook. So what I'm gonna do is this is the world's fastest approach here. A little bit of a crosswind. I feel like there's only, only crosswinds in this game sometimes. But this game interprets a crosswind as, you know, one knot. In the real world, you could have a six knot crosswind and not even know that there was a crosswind that day. Gotta be a very bumpy landing at that speed, but that's okay. Boop, boop. All right, go ahead and pull back on the controls. Let's go ahead and start slowing down. And let me go prove my point real fast. So our total video time today was about 10 minutes and 22 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shut our aircraft off here. Go ahead and shut this off. And I just wanna prove my points. Seven minutes, 25 seconds. So hopefully you see that. Enjoy.